Far Cry 2 and 3 have dramatically different design philosophies. Far Cry 2 puts you into an unpleasant world that doesn't care about you and says, good luck, and pushes you out the door. Far Cry 3, on the other hand, lays out the red carpet and barrages you with incessant tutorial prompts. Far Cry 2 begins with your arrival at an unnamed Central African state that has exploded into civil war. You come down with malaria right away and have to take medicine for the rest of the game to treat it. You play as a mercenary, helping one side or the other, or both, as two factions fight for control. You don't play a good character, you're there to kill people for money. Everything in Far Cry 2 is bleak, desperate, and inconvenient. You start with garbage weapons, and it takes a while to own decent equipment. You can take better guns from enemies, but they're always in very poor condition and will jam constantly. Weapons have durability, and you can't repair them. All you can do is replace it with a brand new gun, which requires you to have bought it from the weapons store. Once you buy a particular model of gun, you can take a new one of it as many times as you want. Some sort of guns-as-a-service subscription model, I guess. The game's currency system is uncut diamonds. You get paid by either doing missions or finding diamond briefcases peppered all over the map. There's a little light on your GPS that starts to flash when you get near one of the suitcases. And the map for each region shows how many unfound diamonds there are in the area. It's one of the few overtly gamey things in Far Cry 2, and feels a bit odd with the otherwise serious tone. Speaking of the map, it's presented as a physical thing. Opening the map means your character pulls up a piece of paper, and you have to look down to see it properly. Time doesn't pause, not even if you're driving. It's stressful, but satisfying to try to multitask the two. There's a rawness to how the game feels. It could have easily made the map a full-screen UI type thing, like most games, but it presents it in a more authentic and deliberately inconvenient way. There's a fairly large open world to explore, although it feels a bit constrained because it's broken up into chunks connected by roads. There's no loading screen between the chunks, so it's not that blatant, but you can even see the map switch over to a new chunk when you leave the bounds of the current one. Missions are almost always go to a place, kill people. It gets really repetitive after a while, but a huge part of the fun happens between missions. Traveling is not easy. There are checkpoints all along the roads where enemies are on lookout. Even driving through them at full speed won't allow you to get away safely. Most of the time, anyway. The enemies can do serious damage if you force your way through, and they jump into their own cars and follow very closely. The trucks have mounted guns, by the way, so a vehicle right behind you means a constant hail of bullets. I tried to push my luck many times, but I usually end up having to dive out of my smoking car and fend off my pursuers. Even if you clear at a checkpoint, the enemies will respawn, so you can never make the world safe to drive through. Far Cry 2 sometimes feels like a power fantasy, like when climbing the weapon tier system with my diamonds that I found in suitcases all over the map. But it also didn't want me to get too comfortable or confident. It also feels like it maybe has something to say about the gun trade and war and broken governments and foreigners swooping in to make a quick buck. But it also sort of feels like a power fantasy, which feels inappropriate. But it also throws so many unpleasant things in the way of that fantasy that I often don't feel powerful at all. It's a strange mix. The most memorable moments are when things go wrong and I have to dig myself out of it. Like this one time when I went to a small village where I needed to kill someone. I got my ATV stuck in some rocks just on the outskirts. I jumped off and killed a sniper in a tower. This alerted everyone and they started swarming me. Immediately, my malaria symptoms flared up, and I took cover behind a rock. I fended off a dozen or so enemies by running from side to side behind the rock, lobbing grenades and stabbing myself with serrets all the while. Fucker!
to my father's black card to my black card. Woo! God, I haven't done Sambuca since I was 20 years old. Far Cry 3 starts off with a bunch of obnoxious bros skydiving onto a random island that happens to be filled with pirates, and you get captured by the pirate lord Voss Montenegro. You then escape and start out on a quest to save your friends, helped by the Rock Yacht tribe who give you a magical tattoo. That is crazy. I like this form. This is a nice fucking form. You get more tattoos on your arm as you spend skill points. Skills and experience are completely new. They don't exist in Far Cry 2. And you are a warrior. And the tattoo will allow for you to reveal your true self. Getting powerful weapons is much easier than in Far Cry 2. You can pick up enemies' weapons, and with no durability system, use them as long as you want. In Far Cry 2, your only upgrades are better equipment. In Far Cry 3, you get that, plus skills that give you things like more health, damage resistance, improved accuracy, and more crafting items from plants. The plants are used for crafting all sorts of syringes, ones that heal or allow you to hunt animals better, or give immunity to fire damage or stay underwater longer. Hunting animals is important because you need their hides to craft things like a bigger wallet to hold more money. No, that's not a joke. Every corner of Far Cry 3 is stuffed with progression systems. Kill stronger animals to get better hides to craft bigger ammo pouches. Progress in the main quest to unlock more powerful syringe recipes. Earn skill points to become more powerful. Get money to buy better guns. It's busy and exhausting. It feels like the game can hardly breathe under the weight of all these AAA trappings. It constantly takes control of the camera so it can show you how much work they put into making cinematic villain monologues. Michael Mondo might be hot, but it gets tiring real quick. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to my show. Chris, I'm gonna freshen you up a little bit, okay? You all right? Wake up, Chrissy. Wake up, Chris. Oh. Oh. He's alive! Oh. Yes! Oh. Open up, he's full of vitamins! Stop it, motherfucker! Oh. Oh. oh my god, your dick is so small! Your That's so not much. what your mother said oh, when I was fucking her in your dad's laundry oh. room, you motherfucker! Oh, That's so right, hot. I fucked your mama, you make loving motherfucker! It's so hot. Talking about my penis! Why is it so hot? Uh, because he comes from oh. my big oh. rhinoceros oh. bladder! Oh. Oh, so Open your fucking so mouth! Hot. I think. Uh. 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 I made sure to have a lot of vitamins this morning. Uh. Vitamin C. Uh. Vitamin E, oh God, vitamin D, vitamin W, vitamin C. It's so hot. You know, I never thought when I used to see you on the big screen that I would piss on an actor's face. I feel like I'm pissing oh. on Hollywood right now. Ah. I'm pissing on oh. Hollywood. <laughs> how, do, how do I follow that up? Okay. Um. <clears throat> back to the. Back to the script. It loves quick time events too and endless tutorial prompts for every little thing excuse me i'm just thinking about michael mondo's dick one thing i think it does better at is having an open world it truly feels like it's open because you can get up on a radio tower or a mountain and see the rest of the island below you you can even take a glider and fly over the island. Far Cry 2 is more a series of open areas linked together by corridors. Far Cry 3 wanted me to have fun and didn't care about engaging with its politics. It doesn't seem bothered at all that you play a white dude who kills hundreds of darker skinned people, or that the leader of the Rakia tribe, Citra, believes this white outsider is a powerful warrior as told in tribal legends 
And in one of the endings, Citra has sex with you, so your legendary warrior DNA can make a super baby. It's not good. Far Cry 3 made playing an easy and frictionless thing. Want to go to the other side of the map? Just open it up and fast travel. Bored of killing people? Go find a time trial challenge or conquer a tower and reveal more of the map. I did all those things, and it was fun. But after playing both games, the most memorable thing in Far Cry 3 to me is trying to land on top of a tower in a wingsuit and accidentally killing myself, which was really funny. But in Far Cry 2, I think of all the times I tried to run a checkpoint and then had to dive out of my smoking car after being punished for it. I think of when I was trying to take a riverboat to my goal, thinking it would be safer, only to find there's checkpoints along the rivers, too. I got shot up and had to keep repairing my rickety airboat all the while. I think of all the times I spent too long out in the field and my guns started jamming and suddenly I'm left in front of someone pointing a shotgun at me while I fiddle with my gun. There's so many memorable experiences in Far Cry 2, and that's because it throws so many obstacles at me. Complications create drama, and drama is memorable and interesting. Far Cry 3 is more concerned with keeping you occupied with progression systems than giving you interesting situations to deal with.